Under the Dome Season 2 Episode 3 Force Majeure. This is a pretty interesting episode. We got a couple of interesting answers, especially towards the end of the episode. That was one that was just kind of crazy. Um, a real Stephen King moment, I think. You know, I forget that this show is done by Stephen King, but that was one of those moments like, yep, we someone this random girl who no one knew who she was it's because she was uh alive in the 80s and apparently uh based on the um trailer release for the or the preview for the next week's episode she died during the 80s as well so that's why no one knew her because she died in high school and people just grew up and they kind of forgot it's like she looked really familiar and the thing that really interests me about that now is that if she died during the 80s or you know she was alive and possibly died or possibly left and died somewhere else i don't know she recognizes barbie and he recognized her he said that in the last episode like she looked really familiar to him and maybe that was why because they met when they were younger maybe he did live in chesterville at some point or at least for a really small amount of time where he just kind of passed through and maybe he knew someone who went to the school maybe a family member of his or something and he just met her somehow i don't know but that really has me interested as to how they know each other if she died in the 80s or early 90s because it was uh class of 88 so i guess that's when she may have graduated but that was really interesting to find out we get some pretty cool stuff uh they had the little moment where people got to use internet they have um, yet another question is who's the House of India because I don't or House of Diana I don't know if that was just uh, Junior's mother but I feel like it has to be a collective of people it could just be her but I'm assuming that's a group of people and I'm curious about that too they may or may not answer that I feel like they have to but that was really cool we get some answers on that we find out that the character Lyle first off in the beginning of the episode we find out that <clears throat> he had a thing for uh, Junior's mother and Big Jim eventually in a way took her from Lyle but Lyle helped his mother escape helped Junior's mother escape for whatever reason and he's kept that secret hidden for a really long time and I'm guessing her um, Junior's uncle knew that as well so he was in on it too and he just went along with it so she has some reason that apparently is really important to her and it's so important and convincing that she got her brother and ex-boyfriend to actually fake her own death and help her i guess escape her husband i really don't know but for whatever reason they're both in on it so i hope we get some answers from that i'm sure we'll get a couple answers we probably just won't get all the information in the next episode but we're gonna get some answers that should be really interesting and we'll probably get some answers about what really happened to Angie because Junior's looking for answers and he could have been his uncle I don't know but Lyle says he might know who killed Angie as well so we'll probably get the answer to that in next week's episode too but I'm definitely excited to figure out how everything works why his mother ran away and never told him I'm just very curious about why she faked her own death and maybe it's because she wanted to escape and she didn't know when the dome was coming so she wanted to uh i guess fake her death before it was too late and then she wanted to escape and that way when the dome came down she'd be on the outside and maybe she'd be able to i don't know get in touch with other people that had the same effect as her or something like that or people that believed and stuff like that i don't know but maybe that's what it was maybe it was something else really random but i'm definitely excited to figure out what the big deal is with her faking her own death and just leaving town and everyone thinking she died but that was a great moment of course the falling blood itself being sort of acidic and sort of being uh linked to a part of the plague that was really interesting too and it was a part of lyle sort of testing certain people particularly rebecca and i really love rebecca in this episode because she had a couple of moments where it's like she had she went back to how she was in the premiere where it was like okay she's the science person and then we also had some stuff with her and i just won't ever remember this woman's name but the monarch woman they have some confrontational moments especially towards the end when uh rebecca throws like the acid blood on lyle 
and she's like, why did you do that? He was about to get in, or give in, and she just looks at her, like, with a blank face, and you have to relate. It's like, he poured, like, what was almost acid down my back, because he's losing his mind and wants me to believe in the dome being like God and stuff, so yeah, I'm gonna, like, screw taking chances with you, I'm gonna throw acid in this guy's face, that's what he gets, and it was just like, I can't argue with Rebecca, because that's, if you're in that type of situation, you aren't just gonna take chances, and you don't really know, I mean, this guy poured acid on her, I'm not really gonna take your, you know, take your word for it, like, yeah, he was gonna give you the gun, and, because you had him convinced, I mean, it's crazy people do crazy things so yeah you get acid in your own face that's what you get but she had that moment I, I really enjoyed that and then at the end she had her contingency plan where it, she kind of seemed like the villain like and there were little moments in last week's episode with her pushing Jim so much I kind of wonder like if she if they didn't establish the fact that she lived in the city long before the dome came down and that she was a teacher for a long time like she was even Angie's teacher so she'd been a teacher for a while if they hadn't established that I honestly would have thought she was like some random fake person that the dome created that could actually talk to everyone else and it wasn't just an image that some people saw because I feel like she really pushes Jim to be sort of the evil leader that he was in season one and it's just really interesting and she has like this really really harsh plan and she does it in a really genius way having sort of the senses to say who's strong who has these illnesses that may or may not come up that's just gonna use up what little medical supplies we have and things like that so it was a genius way to do it but it was still a fairly evil thing to do and it was like she put it, it was only a contingency plan and we find out in this episode that the contingency plan needs to be used much sooner than we expected because in the last one they already had problems with crops but as she put it that was a bit of a cheat just to make it seem like things were okay but the time is now where they have to make decisions as to who's gonna live and who's you know who's gonna die so I enjoyed her in this episode she had sort of some evil moments towards the end kind of pushing Jim back into who he was in season one making the really tough almost emotionless cause like you live you die sort of stuff but I really enjoyed her in this episode we got a great confrontation between I guess like the teens of the show uh that was really interesting of course that led to the really crazy twist at the end of the episode but that was cool we had a, <laughs> a little moments um and I can't think of any of the names I remember Joe's name but the girl who we find out is apparently Melanie Cross. I can remember her name because that was like the last thing I saw. But we find out, we, like we have her and she's picking up certain things. Like she was told something and she repeated that. But unfortunately she's like, you know, we'll figure it out, sweetie. And she says that to Joe when his girlfriend's right there. It seems like he, she's just kind of coming on to him. And it's clear that that's not what she's trying to do. But it's like she's just this new girl coming out of nowhere and it does I guess to Joe's girlfriend it kind of seemed like she was just pushing herself on him a little bit but that's of course not how it was but she did do some crazy stuff like she knew the uh, locker combination which I initially thought she kind of had some weird psychic link which I guess that actually would have made more sense or would have been less surprising than her actually being dead and just remembering the combination from when excuse me when she was alive but it turns out that she was actually just the previous owner or one of the previous owners of the locker and she knows the combination out of nowhere and it was just really crazy and so they have their little confrontation which I enjoyed they didn't actually fight I thought they were going to when she actually pushed her back and I was like she actually didn't just have that sort of scared I don't know what's happening look she was like you know I'm tired of you being in my face and she pushed her back but they didn't actually fight and even though the locker was empty, they do get the answers that they need to, at least a little bit. They don't actually get any, uh, we don't really get any real resolution as to how the whole internet signal thing came through, but we could sort of, I guess, track that to, I guess, sort of a last ditch effort of something from Angie, I guess, sort of resonating throughout the school. But it definitely made a great twist for the end of the episode. Uh, it allowed for a great, yet another great plot line towards uh finding out what exactly happened to um 
Junior's mother and why she left and so we have a new source of information and I guess we technically have too because we find out that Junior's uncle is on the is in on her faking her own death so that may come into play in the next episode who knows with Lyle because he's clearly trying to get his own get himself in order so he wants to get out of prison Junior's gonna let him out because he's the only one who really has the information so I'm definitely excited for next week. I enjoyed this episode. Not much from Big Jim. He crashed. He got pushed out of a car. And then he passed out. And then he woke up at the end. Not much from him. But I'm sure once he's up and at it again. He'll like that experience. Will kind of lead him down the path he was in. In the first one. Because he's going to be a little pissed. That he got pushed out of his car. Or pulled out of his car. And left to die in acid rain so he's gonna be a little pissed in in next week's episode so i'm excited to see how far down the old path he goes and how much the whole uh believing in the dome type of thing changes how he acts in the next episode because he's really gonna have to struggle with being him his vindictive self where he's just like you piss me off i'm gonna destroy you now versus what happened to him in the season premiere where he was really gonna kill himself and now he believes the dome is testing him to be this great leader so he won't do all the crazy things like just murder people that get in his way because he feels like the dome will probably get retribution for whoever he murders so i'm excited for that too but great episode excited for next week of course comment below let me know what you guys thought of it your favorite parts your least favorite parts and i guess the biggest question really i guess there are two really big questions one of course is what do you guys think uh, or why do you guys think Junior's mother faked her own death? And also, how do you guys think Melanie, I guess, came back to life or was sort of reborn or whatever by the Dome? And and why was she reborn by the Dome? What could possibly be the reason for that? Comment below and let me know what you guys think about that. And thanks for watching.